It's another Thursday night live stream here on Self Publishing with Dale, and we're going to do something a little bit more unique this time around, and we're going to do a self publishing question and answer. It's going to be a hangout for subscribers. Are you up for this? Yes. I'm up for this. So you're going to want to make sure that you stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale and Kelly. If you want to learn a little bit more about publishing books that sell and building an unstoppable brand, make sure that you subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single live broadcast as I mess up the intro and everything else, but who cares? Honestly, we're here to have a good time and that's exactly what we're going to have. So today is going to be a self-publishing question and answer, but here's the really cool thing. I'm not going to make it awkward force everybody to have to, uh, you know, do questions and such. So let's get everybody to kind of file in. Those of you that are watching this on the replay, uh, hang in there. You may want to kind of skip forward just a little bit because we want to give a little bit of a shout out to the people that are already here. And I know already been talking to my boy, Kevin McGuire, Kevin Barry McGuire. Uh, this, this is a best-selling author, by the way. This guy crushes it on the Amazon. Who else is here? We have Keith Wheeler, Mary Vogelsong, or Vogelsong, uh, Boom Blogger, ES Hart, ES, go back and watch the replay of my video. I shouted you out about an hour and a half into it. I answered your question. Yes. And we'll answer it again tonight. Kathy Mankin, uh, Mark Brownless, CV Interview Service, Ernest in the House, Kathy Mankin, I think I just said you. If I missed any of you alls, I apologize. John Wasser, everyone. Good, good to see you, see John. Else. John and I actually were just jib jabbing uh, via messengers. So, uh, big banana sticker to everybody who showed up. What's up? It's good to see you. And you just you blazed right over one name. We almost always got to stop and do this one. Did you say Keith Wheeler was in the house? I did. Keith, Keith Wheeler. Wheeler. Woo! It's good to see you, Keith. Everybody, hey, if you haven't had the opportunity and you want to learn about putting together no content book interiors, you want to head on over to Keith's channel. All you need to do is head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash Keith to check out some of his great content. And uh, am I understanding that now uh, he got his novel out, I think officially as of today, so he's going to be providing more relevant and new content. And speaking of relevant and new content, load us up with your questions and we're going to give you a little bit of a week or two in review. Some things that we were kind of talking about and you know what, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll dress that up in the room. As you come on in, if you've got a question, could you do us a little bit of a favor? Put the letter Q at the very beginning of your comments so and that way caps. we can kind of, yeah, and, and if you want to go all caps, that's fine. Just only for the questions, folks. And remember, like, let's like not fight. Okay, so if you've got an answer, you want to give it to somebody, that's great. If that person's not listening, you know. Alrighty, so uh, with that being said, what's been happening in the world of self-publishing? But first, the relevant news, Kelly. Yes. So uh, I can give you guys this one right now. It is, as of today, the first day of National Novel Writing Month, 2018. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, essentially the whole point is to write a short novella uh, being short relative terms, being 50,000 words in the course of the National Novel Writing Month. And it's just to get it to where you're inspired and you're moving forward and you're creating some great work. The whole point of National Novel Writing Month is not to publish a book, folks. It's to write that book. So your goal is going to want to be about 100, or excuse me, 1,670, uh, 1,667 words per day over the course of this month so you can meet that goal. What I would recommend is just do a little bit. Just do a little bit. I see you smiling. What are you laughing about? Are you just I'm smiling just in reading. general? Sorry, I can't look at you because of that bright light. That bright light? Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, why, don't we, why don't we just turn it? We'll, we'll just do this on the air. Why not? Here we go. There we go. See, look. Now there, I, I, I can look at you. Oh, now we got this huge shadow. All right, here we go. So, National Novel Writing Month. Uh, I did about 2,900 words today. I literally set a schedule for the next month. I'm going to be honoring that. And it's my goal to put out my first nonfiction book about self-publishing and brand building. Pretty cool, Please. right? Yep. I don't talk to my wife too often about things like this. No. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Kelly, tell them a little bit about this news. 
Well, we don't know all the facts, yeah. but Draft Digital announced their print beta. From my interpretation, oh, and it's a wait list, and you have to sign up for the wait list. Yeah. It's not just a every account gets it. From my interpretation of the email, it's like Lulu, and tell me if you think differently. Okay. It's not automatically going to be distributed to you know everyone and their mother who you know sells paperback books. Mm -hmm. It's more of a print-on-demand service, and you have to physically request it. So in my opinion, okay. it's not a solution to extend off Amazon with no content books unless you want to do marketing. Right. I know there's a few people who are like, no content books! Like they're all freaking out. It's like, well, first of all, calm down. Uh, it's still beta, so I really recommend go with the tested, tried and true methods of producing no content, low content books. So those of you indie authors out there, this could be possibly a solution to you publishing somewhere else. Uh, here very soon on this channel, actually, I'll be releasing a video series about self-published uh, books unboxing. And I'm actually gonna do a comparison of the Create Space to KDP Print to Lulu, and possibly gonna add to that little list of Ingram Spark because Ingram Spark has some great books. But stay tuned to this channel. Also, I'm gonna share a little bit more um, about Create Space and all that kind of stuff uh, here very, very soon. Relevant news, here we go. Merch by Amazon. Kelly, tell me about this. I, I know you were the one who informed me about it. According to Merch today, there's um, an announcement on the dashboard. Let me just. Um let me just bring it up and I can read it verbatim. Okay. Um, in summary though, they don't plan on freezing or throttling or any of that good stuff. Okay. Um, let me see. To ensure customer orders are shipped on time during our busiest shopping season in November and December, we may extend product fulfillment times, which is normal. They did that last year. Yeah. Fulfillment times include the printing and packaging of orders and are independent of the time it takes to deliver an order once shipped. Old news. Fulfillment and shipping times determine an order's delivery date, which is viewable to customers during checkout. Normal. Please be assured that we do not plan to reduce the availability of our products Diana, you were asking me today about pop sockets. <laughs> uh, remove products from search results, aka throttling, lower daily publishing limits, or pause account tier upgrades. We will provide updates to the dashboard beforehand if this plan changes for any reason. Obviously, this is Amazon's baby. They reserve to write. Thank you, Diana. Yes, look at the monkey man in appearance, the capuchin monkey, putting the, mo the, uh, the money inside there. We want to give you a special <laughs> banana sticker, Diana. Big shout out to you. Thank you very much for the super chat. Some people aren't aware. What's this super chat thing here on YouTube? If you see inside the chat here during the live broadcast, there's a little dollar sign here. And it's in a way that you're able to donate towards the channel. We appreciate anything that you're able to give towards us. But it's never expected. Always, always appreciated. And she has a very important question. And I actually figured this out today. Okay. Why can I give Dale a tip through YouTube but not Kelly on her YouTube Live? <laughs> Dale, please share this huge tip with Kelly. Well, I, I was- I fixed it. <laughs> I was actually approved for monetization this yeah. morning. And I just assumed, oh, you're approved for monetization. Yeah. Super chat's enabled, which is what the tip is called. Yes. No, it wasn't. I had to actually press the enable button. So tips like on my channel too are always appreciated and will always go back to the channel yes. for upgrades, never necessary. Yes. But next time you see me on a live, Diana, I'll have the tip button. She'll, yeah, she's had it set up. <laughs> I, I, I figured out what it was. The it hit me. Um, uh, all right, so back to Merch by Amazon. Thank you very much, Diana. We appreciate that. Uh, uh, just to kind of tie this stuff together, if you happen to be an indie author or a self-publisher in general, you might be wondering, what does Merch by Amazon have to do with me? It is another form of publishing. It's another way to diversify your portfolio. So if you have not broke ground over on Merch by Amazon, highly recommend you just search up Merch by Amazon and just apply for an account. It takes a little bit of time for you to get approved, and once you do, you know, stay tuned to this channel. I'm gonna be giving a lot more information about Merch by Amazon and how you can utilize this for your author brand. Speaking of Merch by Amazon, this was another one here. This was actually released about the time that we were just leaving Seattle. Uh, they are actually releasing bigger sizes in shirts and also they're allowing for adult themes. So curse words, anything to do with um, medicinal uses. I want to say this just very carefully because YouTube gets a little iffy on some words. 
um, any kind of curse words, things like that. These adult themes, however, bear in mind, do not put them on youth sizes. It's a great way to get your account shut down. Don't do that. It's just adult things. So adult themes, you got questions, make sure that you refer to the FAQs in your Merch by Amazon account. Uh, but the bigger size is really a very big win because there's been some times where some people are like, hey, do you have a 2X or 3X in women's? And I was like, no, I'm sorry. You know, one of those type instances. All right. Kelly discovered this little thing. So create space merge over to KDP. By the way, I do have a video in production. I have successfully moved my create space account over to KDP print little issues at all. I mean, literally, I just not missed a beat. And I, I gotta tell you, I'm really happy about having it there. Uh, so, but Kelly, you discovered there were some issues with categories that were dropping off, right? Yeah, this was my live today. Mm -hmm. um, so I apologize if this is a repeat, but long story short, when you transfer your books from Create Space to KDP, when you go to edit the titles in KDP, some of the categories will be missing. The ones that are missing are the ones that you could choose on Create Space, but not on KDP. For example, the biggest one that affected me was the self-help journaling. And when you go to edit it, you will see that not there. But don't freak out. It is still on your product page. Yeah. You just have to, if you wanna continue forward in the editing process, you have to add another category. Then once it's approved and updated, the self-help or whatever category was missing yeah. will still be there, and then your new one will be there as well. Yeah, good stuff. Alrighty. Um... By the way, keep loading up those questions, folks. We do appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna blaze through, like I said, some of these relevant news. And, and if you guys enjoy this, uh, by all means, let us know, because we'll continue to try to provide a relevant news. Publish Drive, uh, this is something that you probably aren't aware of. They just sent out an email today. Uh, I really highly recommend, if you haven't had a chance, go over through my referral link of selfpublishingwithdale.com slash publish drive and set yourself up a free account. I actually have a full video series based on Publish Drive. Uh, big shout out to Adam Woods. And uh, Kinga, you guys are awesome, I really appreciate it. So here's a really cool feature that they have as a book promotion. Every month at the very beginning, the, very, the first of the month, they'll talk about the book promotions for the next month. So next month's featured titles, you can actually have them featured on these particular platforms if you have a book that aligns with that. Now they can't promise that you'll get the featured title spot, but it's 100% free for you to have a promotion on something like this. So in any event, uh, you'd have to fill out a form. The uh, few uh, uh, aggregates, or excuse me, aggregates platforms that they're actually fulfilling it through is Overdrive. If you've got technology guides, grilling books, winter themes, holidays, and human rights, those are the featured titles. Scribd, if you have winter themes, holidays, best books from 2018, must read books, if you will. Odillo also has Pearl Harbor Day, end of semester, winter themes, and holidays. So if you're in published drive and you've got any of those type of content that's there, or if you plan on going and breaking ground over in published drive, now is a great time to do it. You want to make sure that you apply for that by November 7th. All right, that's going to be one week from today, less than a week from today, if you want to get that in and possibly get featured 100% free. That is a really cool feature that published drive has. So, um, are you a gambler, Kelly? Yeah. Kelly loves the blackjack, guys. Loves the blackjack. Every now and then a little bit of craps, but you're, you're not a huge fan of them. And video poker. Video poker, she loves video poker. Folks, like she will dominate on video poker and video blackjack. I hate those things. I, I just want to tip them over. They just make me angry. All right, so if you're a gambler, the KDB Select Fund, Global Fund was $23.4 million for September 2018. All right. It's gradually really moved up every month. It's always been upwards, all right? But with this being the beginning of quarter four, October 2018, what can we anticipate for the KDP Select Global Fund? And they're gonna release that information. It's typically the 15th of every month. Uh, so November 15th, we'll hear what the KDP Global Select Fund is going to be for October. So what is your guess? Drop them right now inside the chat. We want to hear from you. What do you guess? 25.2. 25.2? I'm going to kick it up just a little bit more. I'm feeling like a gambling man. Not that we're going to lose anything on this one here, but let's just guess. Anybody that can guess this correctly, you not only get a banana sticker, but you also get my love and admiration. 
Ah, uh, yeah, so there we go. Everybody wants that. All right, so uh, drop that guess on in there. I want to see some guesses. You can do Don't, it. Yeah, just do it. You hear him. You can do, do it. it. All right, so um, any events, that is the relevant news. Guess in the comments right now. My guess is going to be 27.1 million. It's going to j- jump up because we're in quarter four, by the way. Isn't it crazy? We're in the second month of quarter four. How is your quarter four treating you? Sales are starting to go up. Yeah. And I did notice in KDP, it's really interesting. Their sales are delayed, but if if you're one of the people it's delayed by like a couple weeks, con- contact KDP. But anywho, it's interesting because, you know, I'll check my sales for today, tomorrow morning, and sales today will be 50. And I'll check them two days from now, and my sales from today might go up by 60. So KDP keeps increasing our sales every day based on, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. And now that I've got the merge over there and uh, you know starting to see, like for some reason I haven't seen any drop in sales at all from, from the, the, the transition. So I, I'm excited. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna pumped, be good. Pumped about it. So what questions do you have about self-publishing books? What would you like to learn more of on this channel? And uh, Kelly's here, so if you want to have any kind of questions, concerns, comments that she can cover on her channel, you can tell her that. Now, what would you recommend? How do so, you get reviews on your books without an audience? Uh, it's gonna have a lot to do with uh, getting out there. Uh, I know it seems like it's a lot of work. You're gonna have to find your audience. You need to meet your audience where there's at. Uh, there's no simple answer. If there's gonna be someone that goes and like, ah, oh, you can review swap. First of all, A, review swaps are garbage. It's, it's, I'm sorry. It's, you know, and I hate saying that because I know that there are some good people out there that are review swapping the legitimate way, but a vast majority of these other ne'er do wells are hiring out people to put false reviews on their books. I think that's a crap tactic. And if you're watching this channel, you know that you're better than that. You are way better than that. So what I would recommend, and and was this Boom Blogger that asked that? Yes. Uh, Boom Blogger, this is a great, great question, and it's definitely a frustration shared by many people. Uh, I would recommend, first of all, check out Simple Publishing University, as well as uh, Book Launchers. Uh, Julie Broad runs that channel, and uh, Nigel Wingate does that one. They've got some great videos on getting reviews and how to get them the legit way. Of course, you can check inside this channel. I've got a few videos as well. But all this to say this, what is your ideal audience? Where are they congregating and how can you connect with them? It's not gonna be a fancy way of doing things. This is the bottom line is you just need to get into your community space. So let's just say as a for instance, let's say that I go and I release Massive Freaking Action, my upcoming book that I'm currently writing right now, when I come out, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come into my community and I'm gonna really talk to them. And you see, I've always been great about giving value to this community. And so by the time my book releases, here's the funny thing is, it's just a simple, you know, hey, look, I got my book out. Um, it'd be awesome if you just leave a review. I'd appreciate it. That's it. Like, it's not sexy, it's not pretty, it's not beautiful. But here's the nice thing is, I've had some books that have sold with zero reviews on it. I don't know, what about you? Yeah, I don't worry about reviews. It's boring. Yeah, reviews. I'd, I'd rather just publish more. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's the thing is, is you know, take a lot of your time, attention, and energy if you can. A little bit can go towards reviews. Don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, I would just recommend that if you were to take any money or any expense or any time, do it into marketing and promoting your book as well as just getting in front of your ideal audience. It's a great question, and it is literally like the million-dollar question because you know, a lot of people are asking it, but there's never a like set answer. I'm jumping ahead, but I saw it scroll by. Knitting Mommy, I hit four figures on my fiction in October, so I was a very happy girl. Congratulations. Nice. Yes, that's the um, stuff I love to we hear. We do have a lot of questions. Okay, let's, so, let's peel through them. One, hi all, Danielle Martin says this. One book What's of up, poetry Danielle? recently on Kindle in October. How soon should I, should I put another out? When it's ready. How often should she publish? That's a good question. Um, Actually, Johnny Andrews was just on here. And keep in mind, Johnny Andrews is a guy that's been in this business longer than Kindle Publishing has been around. Uh, Since 2006, he was in this whole space of self-publishing books. And uh, one of the things that he expressed was, you know, four to six publications per year maximum. He doesn't believe in the philosophy of doing monthly, you know, uh, releases because you're forever stuck on that hamster wheel. 
His belief is that you need to create the product, you need to connect with your audience, and you can convert them you know, however you wish to. You know, I think at this point, you know, that conversion could probably be they just buy more of your books. Uh, they could be buying some coaching services. They could be buying a series of videos that shows you creating your fictional characters or talking about those things. So, um, you know, I'm just gonna say that when it comes to volume, you just gotta do what, what you're most comfortable with. Uh, a good friend here of mine and a former coaching student, Mark Brownless, is, is a great example that he released one good book last year and he's released a short read since, but he focuses on putting out good quality content based on what he can do in his life. So that's what you gotta kind of find within yourself. What can you do? What are you capable of doing without sacrificing quality? Risa Faye says she wants your shirt. Thank you. It's actually online. You can just go over to uh, selfpublishingwithdale.com slash shirts or shirt, one of the two, um, or just look up Self Publishing with Dale brand over on Amazon and actually pull that up. So um, I don't ever leave links for it because I never want to be too pushy. But yes, uh, these are available. I have a whole line of shirts, by the way, folks. Uh, Boom Blogger asks again, who is your mentor? Boom Blogger, who was my mentor? Yes. Who was yours? Um, well, you've had a, had a business coach more recently. Would you I mean, I have, your you know, I've had many business coaches in my life, but I don't yeah. know if there's one particular person. I, th I think I have like a whole cluster, a good cluster of people mm -hmm. I try to learn from, from, yeah. you know, my current business coach, Carla Marie, yeah. uh, Jason Brock, I was about to call him his nickname. Um, <laughs> Please don't. Um, Lewis Howes has been instrumental recently. Gary V, yeah. you know, I, I, in general, just positive, uplifting business people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, it's Jason Brock was, was absolutely critical, but that's, it's been well over a year and a half, maybe two years since he's really done any kind of mentoring for me. So uh, I hate to say this, but I'm in between mentors. <laughs> uh, you know, if there was any transition, I'd probably go and start using, uh, using, sounds like weird, like using, you know, I'd probably start to lean a little bit more on Johnny Andrews. Johnny's a exceptional guy, fantastic, you know, wealth of knowledge, and his energy is off the frigging hook. Anybody watch that interview can probably agree with me. Uh, what are pop sockets? I keep hearing that term. <gasps> Whoa! Thank you, Jacuti Pie. Loving that super chat, Jacuti Pie. You are so fantastic. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for all your advice and help. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Thank you. Thank you. That is really so cool. Once again, never expected, always appreciated. The super chat is an awesome feature, and trust me, all of those earnings are gonna just gonna literally go back into the show. If you guys go back and watch the old videos, compare it to now, uh, you'll see that I use some of those earnings uh, that I get from AdSense and everything else to upgrade this channel and give you guys more quality products. So thank you, Jacuti Pie. Go ahead. Uh, Pop sockets. I would grab my phone. It's out of reach. Uh, let me just grab my phone. Yeah, uh, or, or for that matter, don't you have uh, an extra one setting over there? You can probably show them uh, that we got from Merch by Amazon. Or not Merch by Amazon, uh, Vid Summit. No, those are getting mailed out. I'm not taking those part. Well, they'll just, just, oh, oh, you already got them mailed out. Okay. Well, there, there you go, folks. Well, no, I don't have them mailed out. They're not even announced. Okay. So in any event, um, just pin it on the outside. There you go. So Pop Sockets essentially attached to the back of your phone. It's a handy dandy little thing that you can, you know, that all the further it goes, tiny little fingers can fit in there. So you're able to no, kind of- No, you gotta- Oh, okay, you had to open it up all the way. I was like, good Lord, is this freaking for like little children? Uh, so it's it's a convenient way of grabbing things. It's not something I put on my phone. I just don't and need it necessarily. you can stand, I like standing it and watching videos. Yeah. It's really handy. It's it's something that's wildly popular, and uh, there are some people I think that collect these things that they oh yeah switch them out on their phones and stuff. I guess it's a thing. Yeah, it is. Wow. Some people, you know, oh. I've had the same oh, one no. for a year and a half. And yeah, I'm fine with it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying. It just reset on me. The scrolling. Um, can. CV interview services, can paperback edition be used for a countdown deal? No, not yet. Uh, somebody had asked me recently, and I actually had, had responded. Who was it? 
I'm sorry? Uh, CV Interview Services. Okay, CV Interview Services, so this wasn't you. Someone asked me this over on Instagram and uh, I sent them a video message about it yesterday and I can't remember who it was, uh, but essentially for KDP Print, there's no pre-sale or Kindle countdown or, or any kind of promo style deals that doesn't cost money. Um, so in any event, will that happen? It remains to be seen, but something to be aware of, and this is something I've noticed in previous years, the create space, Amazon will actually mark your price of your book down, but they will still honor the royalties due to you. So as a for instance, my book was normally $8.99 last year. I kicked it up to $14.99 going into the New Year's. It's, it's a popular thing for fitness books to be purchased. Well, the funny thing is it was you know selling pretty consistently. Well, Amazon was like, ah, price strike. You know, for the funniest, the funniest reason, because of that price strike, my sales increased and I was able to collect even you know more royalties at that higher tier. So this is nothing that's ever assured to you. So don't just go over and try to kick up the price of your paperback so you can get like you know a price knocked down. It's real random. Uh, there were some books that sold really well and I tried that and they were like, Pfft. yeah, $29.99, it's gonna stay $29.99. We're not marking that down to $14.99. Uh, so it, it just really randomly happens. So I actually just confirmed they do it for KDP print as well. I actually had one of my books through KDP print and they've already marked the price down. I was like, whoa, and they're still honoring that royalty structure that is set up in place. So just something to be aware of. So I would say that if you've got any number of books, go in and peek in from time to time on them to see if that little price slash is there. Um, it's, it's pretty cool, I, I think it's nice. What products or books, are, Risa Faye says, what products or books are you most proud of out of all the stuff you've put out so far? Courses, low content books, fiction, nonfiction, videos, etc. You first. I would say two things. Well, if it's a physical thing, just one. Mm -hmm. And that is actually putting out a YouTube channel because I first mm -hmm. ta started talking about it in, it was either... I think it was early 2013 is when I first said I was going to put out a channel. Maybe it was 2014. Anywho, it was at least three years, possibly four or longer. And to finally get a channel out, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then um, I was going to say the non-physical item would be actually fulfilling my goal last 2017 of actually doing a five-figure month. Yeah. So. Yeah. For, for me, I think the most the, the thing that I was most proud of as far as publishing goes uh, was the, the stretch workout plan. That one, um, I feel like, it, and if anybody who's ever purchased any of my books and actually looked at it, you can, you can read something from say like the three keys to greater health and happiness, and then you pull up the stretch workout plan and you compare the two, you see just a, a, a radical increase as far as the quality of the writing. I'm not saying that the first book was terrible, but uh, Stretch Workout Plan, I feel like it was one of my strongest ones to date. And that was one that like literally, it shot up there and every now and then, it just for some reason has like random spurts without me having to advertise it. It'll just be like, jumps right into like the 10,000 in the paid store. And then other times it's like, 100,000, 300,000, and all of a sudden people are buying it again and it's back into like 20,000, 30,000. So the stretch workout plan was something I was very happy about. And, um, you know, as far as, you know, products, courses, everything else like that, you know, um, I enjoy sharing content. I enjoy hearing the success stories, like people saying that, hey, because of you, you know, listen, and I, you hear this quite a bit. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't force them to drink. And that's that's a fact. You know, I'm not going to be able to tell you all this information and just things happen. Like, yo, hey, I'm independently wealthy. You're going to make $1,000 in your first month. That's not me. That's not my style. I, I don't do that. So when you're able to take some of that information and actually implement it and you get success, man, that's a high to me. That, that really is exciting to me. And I, I don't need to you know, have much more than that. The fact that I'm able to help somebody out, whether it's getting an extra $20 a month or it's getting an extra $2,000 per month, freaking awesome, man. And I, I just, that right there is just, it's awesome to me. I think it's really cool. And I never take credit for it because you gotta do it on your own. 
Risa Faye wasn't sure if the questions are supposed to be personal or about publishing, but this one's sure. kind of cool. Sure, fire away question. Listen, it's a hangout for subscribers, folks. You guys, no holds barred. Uh, just please, let's keep it family friendly, of course. What do you guys enjoy doing on your downtime? Uh, I, I love walking places with her. Like literally we can just go and walk for like miles at a time and not even go anywhere. Like we did downtown not too long ago, well before our all of our freaking trips, but we haven't done it since, but we went and walked and walked and walked until we had blisters on our feet. That's my idea of fun. I just enjoy myself when I spend time with her. I love walking too. Um, I like watching wrestling when, sometimes. Guilty. Um, <laughs> um, but if it was on my own, it, it's kind of tough because I kind of enjoy working and I'm kind of a workaholic. So yeah. yesterday I finished all my work by like four or five and I took a nap, I watched TV. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Naps are nice. Yeah, that's that's another one. I like to turn on home improvement shows, uh, not the Tim Allen variety, but like home improvement, like Fixer Upper, um, you know, Flipper Flop, or you know, things like that. I like to turn it on and just fall asleep on the couch. I love falling asleep on the couch to TV. I think it's yep. so relaxing. Yep. Yep. Um, Boom Blogger has an easy question. What's the minimum size pages of KDP? Twenty four, no more than two back to back that are t completely blank. Um, yeah. ES Hart, Kelly, how many total pages do you put in your standard no content books? Um, I don't know what you define standard. Yeah. Um, mine range anywhere from 90 to 120. Yeah. And then if you have some that are like 365 days, obviously it's going to have that many pages. Be careful you don't walk over the table. Whoops. That'd be a bad thing. Um, let's see. Uh, for me, I would say uh, the the. By the way, everybody always throws the no content stuff. Hey guys, guess who started that in the household? It was me. Uh, yeah, for the no content books, I find generally speaking ninety to hundred pages. But you just got to know your market and your niche and who you're sending it to, and make sure that you're communicating it properly. So um, you know, don't just put out like a twenty-four page no content book and expect to become successful. Don't expect to go throw 90, 90 or hundred pages. It just varies. And with the low risk, maximum reward that comes through no content book publishing, you know, you're, you're gonna find that, you know, hey, you throw something against the wall, it doesn't, it doesn't stick. I mean, hey, you're, not, you're out a little bit of time and that's about it. I think the main variable in it is the niche. You've gotta know the niche that you're publishing for. Yeah. Like a guest book is not gonna have the same amount of pages as a normal journal. So just right. keep, keep that in mind. Yeah, I think uh, Keith actually was great about sharing this to where he actually had like a softball style journal um, to where it was like tracking games, but what he discovered was it was too thick. There was too much stuff, so there would be no way that anybody would have ever be able to fill that up in an entire season. So it, you know, you just got to kind of know ahead of time. Thank you very much, Keith. We appreciate that. That you know, um, uh, Keith that Wheeler. There go. Keith Wheeler. Yeah. Other questions. There's yeah, more questions, one. but I just saw Mojo. Kelly is the queen of no content. Sorry, Dale. <laughs> Mojo? Yeah. I'll take that. You got the gig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Mary Vogel song. Which no content journal covers sell better, photographs or artwork? Hmm. I have no idea because most of mine are text-based. You know, I actually have a good good uh, variety of those. It's rather split. It's rather split. I've got some with images and I have some that are artwork. It, it really varies. Uh, I, I enjoy doing more with images uh, for some reason. I guess that's that portion of me that I, I like to look at pictures. I'm the kind of guy that will leaf through a coffee table book and look at each one of the pictures and I won't read a single bit of it. So that's Kelly rocks. You do rock. <laughs> Mojo ain't going anywhere. Yeah. I didn't think you would. Uh, just to piggyback off the review question mm -hmm. earlier, Kevin McGuire says his second best selling book has zero reviews and his best selling nonfiction has one review. Yep. 
So pay attention to Kevin. By the way, folks, this is a guy that has been studying this business for the past couple of years. He's been following me since practically day one here on this channel. He finally implemented a strategy this year and he's seen some massive success. Really proud of the guy. So this tells you reviews. I mean, okay. Okay, there you go. I, I just happened to notice Ernest from CV Interview Services. Hi Dale, your tips has really helped my business. Pleased I got 30 sales in October for print edition. Thanks. High fives for him. There we go. Yeah. Um, I think this is in response to the mentor comment. John Mosser said, I once thought of Dave Kazeel in that light. He's always just been a buddy to mine. I've never, I don't think cool I've ever thought of him as a mentor. No, but he's, no, he was kind of. He's kinda, still a cool guy, and just because he's not yeah. in publishing anymore doesn't mean he's bad. Yeah, uh, he was a peer of ours. He he came up in the same circle as us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I there was, I would say it was probably about a year and a half ago. We were still in Arizona, so maybe it was a couple years. I had uh, gotten in touch with Dave and tried to coax him to come over for an interview on the channel, but he politely declined. He just said, it's not for me anymore, man. Thanks, but no thanks. Which is cool. Yeah, D Dave's an awesome guy. Really, really sweetheart of, of a dude. Um, HR Romero, you're late. Now we got to start the thing all over here again. Uh, no, just totally kidding. Glad to see you, HR. Boom Blogger wants to know how many languages do we both know and what's our nationality? <laughs> I know English and I've got a tenuous grasp on Spanish. I can, I can read really well in Spanish. But speaking it, I'm horrible, horrible. If I write it out, I'm, I'm good. So it's just probably getting back into the practice of it. And I know, ugh, I probably have an inkling left of an understanding of Japanese because I had lived in Japan as a teenager. Actually, I wasn't quite a teenager then. Actually, I was 10 to 13 years old when I lived in Yakota Air Force Base. And I speak a very little Spanish and I took French in middle school and high school. But when I went, I took French first, and then when I took Spanish, I always confused the two. So yeah. I'm no longer, I don't know if I was ever fluent at each, but mm. yeah. Um, do you write books, Bloom Blo Boom Blogger, do you write books or do you buy books to other people write? I don't write at all right now. She, she has done it in the past. Uh, I, ha I have one book out. It's not something part of the current uh, business model. Uh, for me, um, I'm just now getting into the as I mentioned at the very beginning of the stream, NaNoWriMo is the very first time I've really participated, so I'm really happy with the fact I did nearly 3,000 words today. I, I'm a writer. I love to write. I like to sit down and write, but I have to be honest with you. I've spent a lot of time, energy, and attention here on the YouTube channel and Twitch and all the other video content creation, and sometimes my writing and my publishing has kind of taken a back seat, so now I'm finally saying, okay, we're going to put some of these things on pause step back just a little bit. I want to go back to the things that I really enjoy about this business. So I'm a writer, uh, but I also, in the same instance, have um, some contacts still within the freelance community that I'm able to hire some writers for ghostwritten brands that, um, you know, it, it pulls in a small chunk of change. I'm not going to lie. It, it's, it's not the greatest. It's not like it's going to make me independently wealthy, but I hire out freelance writers based on my interests. So in other words, I'm not going to hire out a freelance writer for a werebear shapeshifter romance book. Just, that's not my thing. I don't, I don't get into that. I like things like health and fitness. I like saving money. I like, you know, uh, time management. I'm going to get things that if, um, if it's going to be something I'm going to publish, it's something that I can get behind and feel confident about and say, okay, this is really cool. I enjoy reading this. I enjoy going through the process of of editing it, I like to see this come to the marketplace, and I can confidently get behind it and put my um, my business, you know, behind this. So uh, this is why sometimes I say I'm an indie author, but I'm also a publisher because I do build other brands besides my own. Katrina, good to see you. The lady writes, "How often do you update keywords for your books?" <laughs> How often should I? Is probably the question. Um, I already answered uh, as far as you know how often, how, how much the publishing business has taken a backseat and um, how long should I? It should be every 90 days. Every 90 days you should be going through and reassessing your titles. If you've got a title that's doing well, don't touch it. Like if it's pulling in some nice cheddar, and when I mean nice cheddar, if you're getting about a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars per month on a particularly given title, don't touch it. 
leave the keywords alone. Like it's doing its work. But if you see it starting to dip down, what I would recommend is going in and, and changing up your keywords. Uh, it's going to be different though based on your business model and what you can allot as far as time and money goes. So uh, for instance, I don't bother with changing out my keywords on any of my no content books. I just leave them as is. Um, up until the Create Space to KDP move, I hardly ever changed my keywords because I just had so much to manage. But since the move, I have been devoting some time every day to updating. Um, I, I do however many I feel like, or I pick a niche, or sometimes I do 10. Um, but it really, really, really helps with niche research too, because you can, when you're looking for keywords, you can think of things that you never thought of before. So just a side note. Awesome, good stuff. Uh, uh, beauty bubble, making me smile over here. Um, no, how do you promote your book after publishing? How do I promote it? Uh, gosh. Uh, my preferred method is Amazon advertising. I really like that a lot. It's, it really doesn't require very much money and doesn't require very much time. So that's my preferred method. Uh, the next method is podcasts. Hands down, easiest way to do it because podcasts are always looking for guests. Always, literally looking for guests. If you've got a niche, I don't care if it's adult baby diaper romance, there's a podcast for it. And so just get on out there. So that's probably, You've got the one that costs being Amazon advertising, which can be dirt cheap or it can be as expensive as you want it to be, or you can reach out to podcasts and do that. And by the way, if you're doing ghostwritten brands, doing audio podcasts is one of the easiest ways that you can represent a ghostwritten brand um, that you know, you're able to just you know, keep your identity shielded. So if you've got a pen name, ghostwritten brand, things like that, they can be a, the way to do it. Just, uh, just make sure that you're not misrepresenting it. There's been some people out there that you know, for instance, they're writing, like a guy's writing underneath a woman's name and doing some, you know, saying some really off key, off color type things. I would say that that's not cool. Um, just make sure that you're stepping forward the most professional way possible. Remember folks, this is a business. At the end of the day, you gotta conduct this as a business. So um, that's why podcasts for the win. Like this right now, audio movement, do not sleep on this. In fact, this episode right now is as it's being recorded, it's gonna be sent out over to podcast platforms on Friday, and it'll propagate out into iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, you name it, every single po podcasting type thing. So this tells you the power and the reach of podcasting. So that's one of the best promotional ways, and it doesn't cost you a dime. Uh, I published my Mr. Way in Five, I published my books on lulu.com. I just found out about the blank book thing. Is this still working? Of course, I know it depends on what you come up with, just like my published books. Yeah, it's, it's still very much relevant. Uh, I still get a good chunk of change, despite the fact I haven't touched my no content, low content books in easily a year. Uh, so it's, yeah. And on top of that, Lulu actually even has templates available. We have that link to those, the templates for planners, as well as um, the notebooks is what they call them. That's actually inside the self-publishing books over on Facebook. Uh, so go join our Facebook group community. That's self-publishing books. Make sure that you answer the three questions to gain entry. If you've tried to get in before and you didn't get accepted, it's probably because you didn't answer the three questions. I deny anybody that can't take the time to at least answer those three things. Um, I will say it is getting more and more difficult to get in, mm -hmm. but journals and workbooks and all that is a million if not billion dollar business so there's still room yeah there's still car galaxy studios oh my gosh i only see you on nick nemmons lives this is awesome to see you join us here so big banana sticker there for you my friend it's great to see you join um are quote book covers for no content books bigger sellers than picture type covers es heart wants to know hmm when you say quote, I don't know if you... I think like maybe text-based is what they're saying. It depends on your niche too. Mm -hmm. um, I sell a lot of text-based, but if yeah. you choose a niche that might not like text-based, mm -hmm. it might not sell as well. Like it, my Bible journal, for example. If you're yeah. doing a journal for Bible study, 
in my mind, I think that that crowd would like more fancy and pictures versus just text. I don't know how mm-hmm. good a black cover with just my Bible journal, I think that's what I said, would yeah. sell. Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, you know, it's it's really tough to say um, because I know I did a, a large volume of text-based ones. As far as pound for pound and units sold, I find that image-based covers sell much better than just the text-based ones. As far as volume goes, you can pump out a lot of the text-based covers really, really fast. But um, uh, for instance, I find one of mine that like it, it took me probably easy six hours to make this really awesome cover. And then I based an entire series on it, five different other covers and different iterations. And at first it didn't sell, but as soon as it did gain some traction, and then I put some Amazon advertising on it, uh, I found that it really, really took off. I tried to do the same thing for text-based ones as far as Amazon ads, no one was buying. And this is, you know, this, this is just kind of opinion-based. Someone else might have some different results. So uh, it's gonna vary from one person to the next. You just gotta, it's just gonna be a case of just testing it out, see what you think. And I definitely would love to hear anybody else's opinions here inside the chat. Remember, this is a, this is a group conversation. We wanna know how you are doing. What do you think? Text-based covers, image-based covers. Which ones work the best? Great question. Boom Blogger, I will just answer this for you. Um, They only have 12 pages in their KDP book, but will Amazon reject it? KDP, the Kindle version is different than the paperback. The page minimum is only for a paperback of 24 pages. If you have a Kindle book, 12 is just fine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, you don't worry about uh, having too few of pages. In fact, uh, this is something uh, I was talking about on Twitch this past Monday, Monday or Tuesday. I was just, just discussing this, that um, one of the things that actually really skyrocketed um, Kevin Barry McGuire's early success. Sorry, Kevin, I'm going to have to continue to bring you out because you're just a great case study in this. But um, I did a challenge within the coaching group to uh, do a Kindle short read. A Kindle short read is essentially a short book. And my challenge to the group was write 3,000 word book. 3,000 words is roughly, flushes out to like nine, 10 pages. Not much. Either way, uh, you know, I wrote 3,000 words today in about 90 minutes. Now, granted, it's probably gonna take a lot longer for me to go through and actually edit that 3,000 words. But it just kind of shows you that um, there is possibility. And Kindle Short Reads is not to be taken lightly. Just make sure that you're communicating it appropriately inside your description, what people can anticipate. So if you go and you put out a Kindle short read and then you call it like, my best fitness tips novel and people buy it and they're like, this is three pages long. Well, they're gonna be angry. They're gonna give you one star reviews. So just make sure that you're communicating it appropriately. And one thing I'd say is try to get a network of peers and mastermind with other people and bounce ideas off of people like, hey, I got this thing coming up. What do you think of this title? It's so important that you don't just keep yourself within your own little bubble. You need to get out there, reach out, and try to touch people in a virtual way, not in an inappropriate way, and uh, get it to where you can mastermind with people and have some people as a sounding board. This is a great community here, by the way. There's so many people here in the chat right now. Please feel free to talk amongst yourselves. It's, you know, I'm never angry if you guys start having chat right alongside, unless it's Yong. Yong Chong, you're not allowed to talk. <laughs> uh, yes, heart question. Would you two ever consider making a vegan cooking channel on either YouTube or Twitch? Oddly, oddly enough, um, we already have one recipe up on Amazon Prime right now. We did that through Prime Video Direct, and it actually is called Vegan Recipes in 30 Minutes. And I'm anticipating, I have to get used to the new oven here but I'm gonna be doing a new recipe for some of my home cooked fries. These things are fantastic. They taste really, really good, but I just, the temperature is a little different in this oven. So I'm gonna be perfecting this and I'm gonna actually turn this into a video. It's gonna go on to Prime Video Direct. Uh, as far as doing it live goes, ah, eh, you know, I, I kind of feel almost like when I start cooking, that's my, like my private time, like our time together. Every now and then I, I do it on Instagram. I would be more apt to do a sit down and eat vegan meal than actually cooking. Yeah. I would be more apt to doing a conversation, but it all comes down to being spread too thin too. I yeah. My next focus right now is on audiobooks. So yeah. me personally, I don't see myself doing it regularly. And 
so it's so tough there's so much opportunity that you know we have and especially being the position that i that we are because they call us influencers i especially have had a lot of people approach me different brands and sponsorships that have i, I have to tell them no because the problem is, is if i commit to all these things i, I literally will have no time to myself so, um, I mean, as a for instance, right now, I'm in talks with my brother. I think some of you guys know him by Bionic Vapor, but the two of us have talked a lot about tech. I mean, I've got a lot of technology around here. There's so much technology that uh, I was like, why don't we do like a channel on live streaming and tech? And, you know, and he, are, he and I are kicking around the idea. It's in the ideas phases, but I can't 100% commit to it because once again, it's just, you end up spreading too thin. So where I have to, where I would want to do a tech channel, that means I got to take away from the publishing channel. And I think some of you probably would boo hiss over that one. Uh, Shalana at New Book Creations. Thank What's you for up, stopping by. Hope all is well in your world. I see a lot of people pushing to get stuff done by Black Friday, which is awesome. But do you guys recommend pushing hard in December through January too? Thanks for all the great info you give. Uh, you know, I would say, try to push all the way up to December 20th because that's the last ship date. Um, after December 20th, literally just sit back, enjoy the holiday season. Uh, whether you, you, whether you celebrate it or not, just sit back and enjoy it because if you're trying to do, so for instance, you're trying to push out, to me, I think the biggest money could be made right now in print books. Um, if you really focus on getting some print books out there, that's really where the money's made. And that's why I say the December 20th, because after that, like most people aren't going to be able to receive it wherever they are at in the world. So um, that's just my opinion. So it's going to really vary upon what you're doing and what you're up to. I know that I'll be working into January because in January, I, I got to see about pushing a lot more ads towards my current crop of fitness books and really getting out there because January is when I really start to see a huge influx of sales because obviously people always go for the New Year's resolutions. What about you? What do you think about that? It just depends on your business model. I don't remember. Does Shalana write or do you know content or do you merch? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, in general, Sorry, I wouldn't work yourself hard. I said earlier today in my live, make yourself a daily goal and stick with it, whether that's pushing hard, you know, sticking with the routine, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I actually think you should meet your goals and push hard until about December 5th or 10th. And the reason I say that is because at least for my, you know, thinking a lot of my stuff on merch and create space, the new stuff isn't really selling as quickly. And I think with so many people getting into the business, it takes a while to get into the algorithm. Yeah. So I think push hard till then. And then after like December 5th or 10th, either, you know, take time to enjoy the holidays, you know, learn stuff, catch up from the year. I'm looking at audiobooks right now. Yeah. And then third, just n maybe not push so hard, but just get ready for the new year. Yeah. So that's that's what I would do, and that's what I am going to do. Right, right. Uh, Daniel Patel actually uh, weighing in here. Daniel, it's good to see you, buddy. Um, I, every time I see your avatar, it always makes me think of that video, uh, Trigger the Algorithm with Brian G. Johnson. Uh, Daniel, it's really good to see you uh, chime in. He says, two channels is hard, no doubt. Yes, he actually has one channel. I think it's Extreme Food Reviews. He does that with his son. They eat some like really crazy off-the-wall things. And he also has his other channel here, of course, the one that I mentioned with the Trigger the Algorithm a song. He does a little bit of behind the scenes type stuff. So yeah, trying to balance those things. And I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I, I find that it, this is a rewarding uh, thing for me to do. But um, if you were to take away my book publishing business and such, and I was having to rely on you know YouTube videos, I'd be in some real hard times. Yeah, it'd be hard times. Uh, you know, I, I do get some, you know, nice little checks from AdSense and some decent little checks from affiliate sales, but for the most part. So, yeah, you know, I'm not ready to go all in on YouTube. I'm sure, you know, if I were to focus on other things like a tech channel, things like that, maybe, possibly. I, I take it you, you, you put down the... Um... Well, I'm going to answer this. Have you answered this question while I go preheat the oven? Oh, she's um, going to preheat the oven, everybody, because we're going to be having some pizza, and it's already dark out here in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Boom Blogger, where do you earn money in general? From KDP Paperbacks Audiobooks, question mark. Uh, okay, so as she's, she's getting, I can actually answer on the behalf of both of us here. 
and I'm going to share you some nerd stats. Okay, first of all, let's let's just take this one step at a time. If you folks can, and anybody knows the answer to this, obviously, 45 watching, 17 likes. Please hit the like button. It really helps our host and the live stream. Yes, April, you get yeah, just you do, can do it. it. Just do it. Um, all right, so here's the deal. You can find a lot of this information over at authorearnings.com. Author Earnings is great about giving some up to date, updated information by quarter. I haven't looked at them in lately, but the last time I did look is a vast majority of global publication profits are derived through print books. That is paperback, hardback. Both those draw pretty much an equal amount of money, but between the two of those, they make a make up a vast majority of global publication profits. Next up in line is ebook sales. Ebook sales per unit outsells all of the other counterparts. But remember, ebooks are a lot cheaper. So the global pro publication profits is a little bit lower. And fun little fact, and I'm just gonna have to be anecdotal, I have to try to remember off the top of my head, so feel free to correct me if I got the percentage off, but the last two years in a row, there has been a dip in ebook sales. But this is where the magic happens. Audiobook, we've seen a nearly over 30% increase in global publication profits on downloadable audio books. Pay attention. Remember I said audio podcasts, if you want to promote your brand, is one of the easiest ways and cheapest ways to do things. Audio is on the rise, folks. It's highly consumable. People listen to it while they're commuting to work. They listen to it while they're working at home, like I do that. They do it while they're working out. Heck, they can be cooking some dinner and listening to a podcast or an audio book. So audio book is one of the things on the rise. Last but not least, there's this weird miscellaneous category, and believe it or not, board books and books on tape still sells. Yes, books on tape and CDs still sell. Makes up like last I heard was like $93 million in global publication profits. Crazy, right? So in this household, now that she's back over here and I've given you guys a little bit of the full one one, uh, I won't speak on my behalf. Uh, I, I, I won't speak. I won't speak on my behalf. I'm gonna have the cat <laughs> talk. Uh, I'm only gonna speak on my behalf here. The vast majority of my income is derived through paperback sales. Uh, I it, it originally used to be ebook, but when I actually had one of my peers kind of bring up one time, he's like, "Is this normal?" And I'm like, "I looked at it, I'm like, what the heck am I doing wrong?" And so I really kind of started focusing on how could I get more paperback sales? And sometimes it's just a case of just digging down, figuring out why aren't you selling things and how can you sell more, more, more of those things. What about you? I have like 11 or 12 different sources of income, but yeah. most of it is paperbacks, mm -hmm. you know, eBooks, whether it be Google Play, Draft2 Digital, Babel Cube, mm -hmm. um, and then some affiliate sales are starting to roll in. Yeah. Um, Affiliate sales are nice, ain't gonna lie to you guys. Ms. Beno, greetings from Spain. What's up, Spain? Uh, talk about Facebook ads for ebook marketing. Have you ever done it? I'm testing different options. Facebook ads link directly to the Amazon page, don't convert at all. Landing page, maybe? Well, I, I'm sorry, I didn't follow that. Um, have you ever done Facebook ads for ebook marketing? I have not. Uh, truthfully, and Carla Marie was trying to talk us into that over when we were in Vancouver, where she's like, you gotta do them. And I understand there's some value, and I know that uh, Mark Dawson from Self Publishing Formula actually has a uh, advertising for authors course that's out there that shows people how to do it. But once again, it comes down to discretionary time and expense. And right now, I just know that I'm not willing to hire that process out myself because the results that I'm getting currently um, so you can give Facebook a try. YouTube ads is another way to do things. And uh, to me, pound for pound, the easiest, cheapest, most dead simple way to do ads is through Amazon advertising, AKA AMS. Some people are still caught behind. They're still stuck on calling it Amazon marketing services. It's now Amazon advertising folks. AA, yes, I know, AA, good, like literally, like Amazon, you couldn't keep it AMS. It rolled off the tongue a little better. And uh, Ms. Beno, I don't do Facebook ads, but Amy Nicholas is really good at Facebook ads, mm, yeah. and she has a YouTube channel, and she also has a Facebook group, Print On Demand Power Punch. Um, she has a paid group and a free group. 
So that would be a good resource that if you want to get better at Facebook ads, you might want to check her out. April wants to know where they can get the banana sticker shirt. Uh, banana sticker shirt, actually, uh, could you look that up for me really quick? And I'll, I'll, I'll scan through here, and um, I believe it should be selfpublishingwithdale.com slash shirt, but just verify for me on that one. And it'll show you my entire catalog of shirts. Yeah, you'll just have to, oh wow, I got a one star on one of my shirts. That's sad, that makes me sad. Oh man. Um, if you just search up self-publishing with Dale, um, Dale Roberts brand, banana, it probably will pull it up. Yep, there you go. So self-publishing with Dale L. Roberts brand, banana sticker, if you just type that into Amazon search query, it'll pull up the uh, different designs. There's this, this is premium, by the way, and then there's the standard, which is, it's a little thicker and it tends to shrink a little bit more. I'll be actually doing no, some more reviews. No, not the new ones. Not the new ones? No. Okay, so they're better now. Yeah. Um, and I've got them bargain basement priced down. I, I like literally, um, some of the shirts I have them shot up, but these banana sticker ones, $12.99 for the standard and $14.99 for the premium. The standards are, I, I like them. I like, um, I like the premiums because it shows my guns, baby. Thank uh, you, April. Boom Blogger, do you guys do audiobooks? I'm starting to learn it. Yeah. I I went through the Mickelson free course today. It's a really good overview. Yeah. And I'm starting to go through the pay course now because I, I need to diversify more. And everyone's talking about audiobooks, so I want to get in on it. Yeah. What about you? I, uh, I do plan on uh, breaking more ground in the audiobook industry uh, just because the time that the Mickelson twins spent with us together, they... Uh, they were like literally if there's anybody out there that thinks that the Mickelson twins are full of poop uh, I, I got to see behind their dash I got to see the stuff up close and personal and I can verify that these guys aren't full of hot wind they are very for real are they high energy um, are they irreverent are they crass absolutely but oh. they're very knowledgeable oh and my gosh you're right though the course they bleep out the curse words. Yeah, like yeah. it's the, it like it's a breath of fresh air, honestly. So if you've ever been put off by the Mickelson twins, which I love you boys, you guys know this. I say this to your face, anyways. Uh, but the course, it's so professional. It's so well done. It's so on point. There's no over talking on each other. They don't bro out. They go right to the point, and they give you some great high high mm -hmm. quality information. It does come at a premium. But if you want to test, take it for a test run. All you got to do is go for the free trial. Just head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash uh, ACX course. So you can go over there, take a look at it, get the free course. Just take it for a test run. You'll see. They, these guys, they got it really buttoned down. But yeah, I'm really excited about audiobook. And part of me hiring out the ghost writer, uh, going back to one of my favorite freelance writers, she uh, does great work and it comes at you know a reasonable premium and now I'm starting to kind of go through a reverse process where I try to figure out what's what's going really good in the audiobook industry what resonates with me what audiobooks would I want to listen to and then I work backwards from there and um, so I've had some great content and I've seen some great returns on my money over an audiobook since implementing some of the tips that they had shared John Wasser, do you sell no content on merch or just KDP print? That is just KDP print. Merch yeah. is t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, and mm -hmm. pop, pop sockets. sockets. Yeah. And, and as far as there is other merch sites like Redbubble that will do journals. Uh, I don't necessarily do that. I do have the products available in my Redbubble store and Spreadshirt possibly. But, ah, you know, I, that's... That means I got to drive traffic to that particular source. Amazon is just so much more organic. If you can just kind of get it to where, you know, you get the product up there and you really answer someone's demand, they're, they're going to go look for your, your your product and find it and buy it. So I, it just, there's too many hoops for me to jump through to try to optimize something on Redbubble. Mojo's wearing one of your shirts now. Yes. That's right. She gets a banana sticker. Sorry. My, my stream deck was, wasn't queued up properly for some reason. I backed out. CV Interview Services took the Twins' course. Their, his audiobook is already out. Good for you. Nice. I'm glad to hear that, Ernest. Ernest um, has really been kicking some butt and taking some names. We're really proud of you, buddy. Yes, Risa. The free course is definitely bleeped out. I've only... Yeah. I know you've listened to the whole course. I've yep. only listened to like a few videos, and it's really, really, really pro. It's, a, it's over eight hours of content, and it's not full, filled full of fluff, and they actually have three guest interviews. By the way, I do a full interview or review video on it and 
you know, and I, I, sh I share the pros and cons. I actually had to have a conversation with the twins and told them, hey, look guys, I, you know, I can't be a shill for you, you folks. I was like, so I'm gonna tell people what has warts about your program. And they were like, totally cool, man. They appreciated my honesty. Uh... <laughs> All we get from your channel are lousy banana, banana stickers. Yes, lousy banana sticker. <laughs> uh... CV interview services. Hi, Dale. My audiobook release is one hour, 42 minutes. Should I need to be worried about the length? Uh, don't sweat the length now at hour and 42 minutes. You're right now kind of in that sweet spot between one to three hours. But I would recommend what usually, what sells most on Audible right now is longer length because most instances, people, members of Audible, get a credit and that credit can be used on any type of books. Now pretend like you're at a grocery store and they say, you can get one item, one item here in this grocery store. Are you just gonna go over and pick up a thing of Tic Tacs? <laughs> no, you're, you're probably gonna go find one of those big like industrial sized like tubs of Lucky Charms, and you're gonna probably take that home. So the same thing works for audiobook, and I'm not gonna say that uh, that's always true, but as most customers, customers are, they got one credit, they're like, oh, I can use it on anything? Do you think they're gonna go for the 20 hour plus Tony Robbins book, or are they gonna go for something that's similar, but it's 40 minutes long? Mm, no, because they see that there's more content and there's more value possibly, perceived value in their brain. So they're gonna go over towards the thing that's gonna be a little heavier. Now you'll have to go and find out how much pricing is for each one of these models, be it one to three, three to five, five to eight maybe, and I think eight to 10, and it, you'll see the price increments change up. Just go over to ACX, uh, search up inside there, they actually talk about the pricing model and how it works. We're caught up on questions. So. Awesome, very good. Well, there's still people, but not question what's the most popular in non-fiction category um i don't know why don't we why don't we look it up on amazon let's take a look uh what's yes. your thoughts on kdp rocket love kdp rocket love it she doesn't she doesn't she doesn't use it but i'm going to tell you now that dave cheston right now is in the midst of putting out a new version of it with paperback or excuse me print book research, keyword research, niche research, and such like that. So stay tuned to that. If you want to get your hands on a copy of that, please head on over through our affiliate link at selfpublishingwithdale.com slash kdprocket. And remember, they do have a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not happy with it, just go ahead and return it for your full money back. Uh, Dave's a good guy. He's on the straight and narrow. And uh, I think there's many people that actually watch this channel that attest to how awesome it is. Do you need it? No, but it certainly does optimize the process. I hate sitting there trying to look up things. I would think it's either self-help or something with keto. I would guess, I would guess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into, I'm just gonna go into the bookstore right now and I'm just gonna choose any old book, it don't matter. Sorry you folks can't see this here. I'm just gonna pick a browse path and we're just gonna look in the top 100 books and the very first book we'll be able to kind of determine Bear with me here. Oops, I should have just went Kindle, darn it. What am I what am I doing with my life? Here we go. Any guesses, Kelly? You said I would just say self help. Oh man, the hubs is trying to call the kids having a fit and I'm literally hiding in the bathroom to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Shalana, now my that's phone's awesome. dying. I cannot get a break. Gonna have to catch the rest later. Thank you so much for stopping by and you, my lady, need some wine or coffee or something. You need something to de-stress. Okay, so uh, top 20 books are all fiction books. The very first one, number 23 in the Kindle paid store, is actually The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, an older book right there, self-help. So uh, there's, there's your answer there. That's the, uh, the top book. Self-help is a super competitive niche, but there's many sub-niches within self-help. So just kind of do your exploration. If it's something that resonates with you, just be prepared that you know, you're know you not gonna be making tons of money right out the rip. You should be making it more of a passion project. And one thing I would say is if you're in the, the realm of self-help, one of the things that you need to do is start connecting with people because 
when you connect with people, especially in the self-help you know, realm, that, that is a really nice uh, community. A lot of just, just people very supportive that are there. So if you show that you care with people, the nice thing is you can put out a good self-help book that answers somebody's problem, you're gonna find someone who's very passionate that's going to be a raving fan of your product and that's probably one of the best rewards you can ever get is getting that one raving fan. I say this, keep answering questions till the oven beeps. Till the oven beeps, all yeah, right. Yeah, because I'm hungry. If I you've need gotten this far, me. by the way, if you've gotten this far, today's word of the day is synonymous. Prove you made it this far. Drop the word in the comments in a sentence or even spell it out. You'll get a double points on that one if you can spell that one out. Our so. viewers are synonymous with amazing. There you go. Ke Kelly, you're not supposed to be giving them anything. Sorry, folks, you can't take <laughs> Kelly's. You can't take Kelly's. Uh, let's see. Uh, how much books do you publish per month? And Mr. Wayan, hashtag new. Thank hmm. you so much for hanging out. You asked a question a while ago. Uh, from what Kevin's saying, Kevin says that self-help's number two and fitness is number, uh, then diet's number one. I'd believe that. I'd believe that. And I'm sure they're always vying for position, but I can tell you that right now, looking into the Amazon bestsellers list on Kindle, um, it's literally like everything's fiction and the very first book pops up is, is Stephen Covey's book. And Monero, what's shaking? How, how are you doing? Hey, Dale and Kelly. Uh, Ernest, it's always great. I, I appreciate all of your... your um, engagement here in the videos and all, as to all of you that actually come over into the YouTube channel and drop comments and such sometimes people are like oh I don't want to bother you please drop the comments there um, you know every now and then I get some people that will email me and they'll or send me something through Facebook Messenger and I hope you're not put off if I ever redirect you to either a say the Facebook group or I send you over to a video, or you come over to twitch.tv slash self-publish every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime. Um, because that way I can answer your questions in a community format such as this. Uh, has everybody been having a nice time tonight? This is a little bit different than we normally do. Yeah, I think Rob Hutchings, I forgot to mention, yeah. it, I think he's the one that said he's from UK, but he has friends in Westerville. Ha, huh, cool, cool. Rob, uh, uh, do you know of a network for self-help you know, not off the top of my head, but I would just recommend uh, open up Facebook. That's probably one of the ver very best places you can kind of open it up. And I don't know, type in self-help or, or think about what it is. What is it that you're trying to self-help? Is it um, self-esteem? Are you, you know, how to increase self-esteem or, or how to manage your time? Find out what it is that the self-help that you want to do, that specific niche down and just search for it in general terms. Think of yourself as the customer. Where are you going to look for? So it could be on a community forum. Heck, it could even be in a meetup group. There's, there's one that's kind of fun. Go to meetup.com, create a meetup in your area. Be like, how many fans of Tony Robbins would love to meet up and talk about his most recent book called Money? You know, there's, there's so many ways that you can do this. I would say that if you can't find them, create the community. I mean, we've had some great success over at self-publishing books. We created the community and they've been really awesome. And I'm not saying this is self-promotional, like literally like between Rebecca Hallman and Kevin McGuire and Keith Wheeler and Mark Brownless and all these people that create this community, I just, I'm, I stand back and I let him. oh, hey, by the way, everybody say hi to Izzy. Izzy decided to make a guest appearance today. Mojo, Izzy is right there and she's doing fabulous. She's doing great. Um, she actually likes her sweaters. We are not forcing her to. So, um, Nope, the oven's not beeping. Uh, um, Risa Fay asked earlier, I think it went up there, pizza toppings. We have Daya. Uh, Dale has a meatless meat lovers. Where's this question I answer have going? <laughs> pepperoni. So she yeah. asked, and I always like talking about yes, food. Yes, And Diana Lovely. says she's headed out to go get Mexican. You enjoy if you're still around. Um, name dropping? HR, am I supposed to name drop? I can talk about my good friend Dave Chesson. Or how about my good friend Tom Corson Knowles? Or, hey, how about this? Let me go ahead and drop 
Derek Murphy's name. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm terrible at name dropping. Sometimes it'll come out through a humble brag, but they're all cool people. I mean, we get along with them. If there's any name I'd like to drop, actually, I always like dropping Nick Nemen's name. Nick's awesome. No, John Wasser, it's not homemade. It was on sale at the no. store yesterday. These Daya pizzas are normally like nine or 10 bucks and they were 25% off, so couldn't resist. Ernest is from London. Oh, very cool. Ernest, like, like dude, we got, we got a good following over there, over in the UK area. I know that uh, my good friend, Mark Brownless, who says, Izzy. The, the only here, cat in the world funny. I like is the house right now. Mm. Hi, baby. Nice. Hey, well, thank you very much. We, we like that. Yes, she is wearing a sweater. It's because it's covering up her surgery scar. She had to have three uh, ribs removed. Partially removed. Yeah, partially removed uh, because it did have a malignant tumor in it. Uh, so she's recovering really, really well. We're very happy. Um, and we're very fortunate that, um, that we're in the position that we are, that we could afford to take care of something like that. Um, I would have been heartbroken if we couldn't have. Car Galaxy, don't forget the hashtag Nimenati. Yes, hashtag Nimenati for sure. I, I love those boys. They're, they're my favorite Saturday morning ritual. And by the way, if you ever wonder what I'm doing on Saturday mornings, Kelly and I are doing the same thing. We're typically tuning in to Nick Nemen's live streams every Saturday morning. A lot of fun. Uh, it's a damn cute cat. Uh, okay. You did not answer my question. I am sad. Michael Kroos, where did you ask? I don't remember. Did he ask something inappropriate? By the way, everybody, um, Michael uh, called me a big butt YouTuber, and I'm saying it in a family-friendly fashion here. Okay, Michael, I'm going up, and I'm gonna see where your question is at here. There's a lot, of, can you blame us, Michael? There's a lot of talking here, so that's, I'm not gonna complain by any stretch. We're st tape, does tape even exist anymore? Yes, tape does How exist. How long in time are the fast-selling audiobooks? Yeah, I, I didn't see that because, uh, question I um, yeah I, I kind of felt like I covered that one already where I was talking about what what sells the best um, three hours or more is, is typically and this is something that even the twins have said three to five hours uh, if you can go higher than five hours that's that's good but you know it's if you can it's all about getting it up as far as you know your your minutes go um, this is gonna vary per account. I mean, really, honestly, I don't know that I've got an exact answer for you, Michael, so my apologies, but I would say as far as profitability goes, get it up there as far as time goes. Now, don't purposely stuff a bunch of wasteful stuff in there, like someone starts reading the alphabet for like five hours straight, that's, that's not cool. Unless, of course, that's what the book's about, I mean, in that, that instance. Mark says, with a sweater like that, Izzy should take up golf. It is so funny. I've never known a cat to like sweaters, but she does like being under blankets. So, um, but I'm glad she likes it because it's so much better than the cone. Okay, so Kevin McGuire brings up a good one. Three hours singles, then a bundle. Yeah, chat's going pretty fast. Not your fault. Yeah, it's, this is really popping. We're really happy you guys are, are hanging out here with us. It has been an awesome stream. So in any event, uh, the oven has not beeped yet. But I'm ready to go ahead and we're gonna pull the plug in the Thursday night stream. How many of you guys enjoyed the way we did things tonight? If you enjoyed it, drop it inside the chat right now. Like literally, I wanna hear from you. And if you're watching this on the replay and you came this far, good Lord, take a few banana stickers with you. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. You guys are freaking phenomenal. In the meantime, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure that you hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody else who would enjoy it too. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale. And Kelly. And we will see you next Thursday.